Scientists have developed the most accurate map of the mammal brain yet, using just one cubic millimeter of a mouse brain. Hello and welcome to The Print. This is Akanksha Mishra and you're watching Scientifics, where I will be taking you through this week's top science news from across the world. In what is being called a transformative achievement for neuroscience, equivalent to the Human Genome Project in its scale, the Microns Project, with over 150 scientists working on it, developed the most detailed map of a mouse brain yet. This in-depth 3D diagram of one cubic millimeter of the mouse brain has over 200,000 cells and 523 million synapses. I know what you're thinking. One cubic millimeter is literally a grain of sand. How big could it be? But this shows exactly how complicated mammalian brains are and how little we know about them. With this new map, scientists can now recognize new brain cells, infer new neural networks, and also make advancements in diseases that have to do with neural communication, which include Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, and autism. One of the scientists involved in the project described this project as having access to a Google map of one cubic millimeter of the brain, which allows them to navigate their way around this complex and essential organ. Next up, we have a study by scientists from IISC Bengaluru who mapped how different climatic conditions lead to changes in the venom composition of Russell vipers, who are some of the deadliest snakes in the world. So, if you get bitten by a Russell viper in Bengaluru versus one in Bhopal, the effect of the venom will be different on you. The reason for this is, according to a paper published in PLOS Neglected Tropical Diseases Journal, because of climate factors like temperature and rainfall. Scientists showed that the potency and toxicity of venom in a Russell viper depends on the kind of climate that they live in. Thus, managing to establish this initial relationship between abiotic factors and snake venom. Russell vipers are responsible for almost 40% of the total recorded snake bites in India. And any deeper understanding of their venom characteristics is very important to understand how to counter these bites and develop the antidotes. Next up, the size of a crude tool carved from rocks helped some archaeologists unravel the different ties between groups of prehistoric people that live miles apart. In a paper in the Journal of Paleolithic Archaeology, scientists from the US and South Africa talked about the discovery of stone tools in a South African cave dating back to 20,000 years ago. This was the end of the last ice age on Earth. And scientists examined the chips on the blades, the structure of the tools, and the core, that is the bigger rock from which these tools are made. Now, when they found this rock, they could tell exactly how the tools were made by being chiseled away from the rock. What they realized is that the process of making these stone tools in the cave in South Africa was very similar, in fact it was identical to the process that's used by humans in Namibia, which was hundreds of miles away. When these processes are so similar, it indicates that these two groups of prehistoric people had connections and shared their methodology with each other. It's not just a coincidence. The study showed how there's so much more to discover about the human race and how there are parts of our history that are still completely unknown to us. Finally, a team of scientists in the University of Colorado probably have found an explanation for the Milky Seas phenomenon. Sailors for years have spoken about a glowy, almost bioluminescent phenomenon in the middle of the ocean many times, especially in the Indian Ocean and the Arabian Sea, which has gotten the name of Milky Seas. While there was some doubt about whether this was called by luminescent bacteria like the plankton that light up the beaches in India and Maldives, it wasn't confirmed. Now, after analysing over 400 years worth of data, which includes eyewitness accounts and satellite images, scientists can confirm that the phenomenon is related to the El Nino and the Indian Ocean Dipole meteorological events. Now, this is a statistical finding. What scientists will do is send a research vessel to the Indian Ocean at the time when they know that they are going to encounter milky seas and then try to get a sample and study it. This will give conclusive evidence of how exactly does the entire ocean light up during this time. That's all we have for you today. Thank you for tuning into the print.